Welcome back to this video. Now we're going to create a model, train the model and save the model. Okay. Afterwards, we're going to load it in another subset. But first we need to create a model in eCognition. Train it with the samples that we've created previously. And then we're going to save the model so we can load it into different projects. Creating a model can be fairly complex because you have a lot of parameters that influence the creation of the neural network. First of all, what I would ask myself is how difficult is the task? So if it looks easy, you can start with a simple network, choose one or two hidden layers. If you think it's more difficult, you can start with four or five hidden layers. If you don't know if it's <laughs> simple or difficult, always start simple um, that makes life easier also for the spatial pooling that you can define you need to be aware of that the resolution is decreasing of your result the more spatial pooling you apply so simply be aware of that fact we do recommend to leave the default settings for testing so if you're not an experienced user with CNNs leave the default settings for creating model and also training the settings that I'm going to show you was just the result of playing around with the data sets checking the results and then going back and increasing or decreasing the number of hidden layers spatial pooling and so on that is for the creation of the model training the model you have different settings uh, we do recommend to leave the default settings if you don't know what these settings um, mean but what you can do actually if you're a bit more advanced is you can run the training in loops then at each end of the loop you can actually compute the accuracy estimates of the model you can create screenshots of the heat map and export them and that allows you to keep track of the development of your model another best practice is if your samples are okay, if you think they're okay, and the model does not learn at all, then you should lower the learning rate and that could improve the result. If it still doesn't learn, double check that your task makes sense, right? And maybe go back to the sample creation or to the overall setup or idea of your project. Overall, don't worry too much about the model itself. It usually has a surprisingly little effect on the results. So the samples are very important. And if your model doesn't work, chances are very high that there's a problem with the sample. So check the samples, make sure you have good samples and the model actually is not that important. All right, let's go back to our project. And I'm simply gonna close the create samples section and I'm gonna create a new section. I'm gonna call it create model and within this process I'm gonna insert a child and I'm gonna look for create CNN so here it is now let's check the settings so this algorithm actually it creates a CNN with initially random weights those weights gonna be adjusted while training sample patch size we have to change that to the same patch size that we used for creating sample patches. Number of image layers gonna be four. We have RGB and near infrared as input. Model classes, select all the classes that we have created samples for. And now hidden layers. I'm gonna go for a model with two hidden layers that actually created nice results in my case. And I'm gonna disable max pooling. So I'm not losing resolution that's also something i'm going to change the kernel size for the hidden layer one i'm going to change that to five executing it will create a model that's a really fast process and now we can train the model with our samples the training is going to take a bit longer so we can get a coffee we have a lot of samples um, so just be aware of that i'm going to create a new structural process i'm going to call it train model so before we train the model, it makes sense to shuffle your samples in your sample space. Because samples have been created in a specific order, right? Ecognition starts with the top left object and creates samples and goes from there in a systematic way. To create a more robust model, it makes sense to shuffle your samples so they do not represent the order how they've been created. We have an algorithm that takes care of it 
which is simply called shuffle labeled sample patches. You can leave the default settings. It's gonna go into that samples folder and shuffle the samples. And that's gonna create a more robust and more transferable model. Now that the sample patches have been shuffled, I can start training the model. Again, that takes a bit of time. I'm gonna look for train CNN, leave the default settings. I'm not changing the learning rate, the train steps and patch size, but here you can actually really get uh, fancy, create a loop, check the different results after 1000 training steps, export the results, and afterwards you can see how your model is improving or evolving, right, based on the samples that have been used to train the model. I'm simply gonna run it, I'm gonna get a coffee, and afterwards we're gonna see each other again. You actually don't need to get a coffee if you have an NVIDIA graphics card as we are supporting GPU processing and that in this case for this training makes it way faster. In my case, I gave it a test. Um, it only takes three minutes using the GPU instead of the 16 minutes um, showing here where I only use the CPU. To enable GPU, you only have to make sure that during installation you check this checkbox which is checked by default um, and then it's gonna use the GPU of your NVIDIA graphics card. Okay, so actually I still have my coffee, not finished yet. It took 16 minutes. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna save the model so we can load it into the project with subset two, okay? So I'm gonna create here a new structural process, call it save model. And I'm gonna insert a child and I'm gonna look for save CNN. Simply again, gonna leave the default settings. That's gonna create a model folder in your workspace directory and gonna create this meta and this index file. Execute this and I'm gonna save the project and we are done for this project. So we created samples, created a model, trained the model and we saved the model. In the next video, we're gonna take care of how to apply this model to a different scene. See you there.